we feel privileged to have Dr. Ayyeh Parni sir in our midst to address our participants. So a uh, special welcome, hearty welcome to you, sir, on behalf of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Sairam Institute of Technology. Welcome, sir. And uh, uh, before uh, moving on to the session, I introduce the guest speaker, Dr. Ayyeh Parni sir, Associate Professor, uh, Discipline of Mechanical Engineering, and Dean Research and Development, Indian Institute of Technology, Indore. So he has obtained his bachelor's in production engineering from Satyabama Engineering College. He did his ME in manufacturing engineering from AC College of Engineering, Anna University. And he obtained his doctoral degree from Precision Engineering Lab Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Madras. His professional experience includes associate professor at IIT Indo, assistant professor at IIT Indo, postdoctoral research scientist at Graduate School of Information Science and Electrical Engineering, Kyushu University, Japan. So his research expertise includes spot materials and structures, shape memory alloy, laser assisted surface processing, laser based micro manufacturing, mechatronic system design, optical instrumentation. So his administrative responsibilities are Dean Research and Development at Head of the Discipline of Mechanical Engineering at Indoor, IIT Indoor Alumni Coordinator, Head of Metallurgy, Engineering and Material Science, and Program coordinator in the year 2012 to 17, RRCAT unit of DA member for PhD admissions, and board of governors member IIT Indo from 17 to 19, and board of governors member Sir has sponsored consultancy projects and various uh, funding agency, and uh, has. Patents and publications and book chapters or as follows. He has more than 75 uh, uh, publications and international journals and national international conferences. He has five, more than five patents. So he's a reviewer and member of uh, Journal of Material Science and Engineering, Journal of Material Letters, Journal of uh, and precision engineering, Journal of Advanced Manufacturing Technology, Journal of Thank you, thank you, thank you, Professor Sir, for your uh, wonderful uh, uh, introduction about our uh, guest, guest uh, Dr. I.A. Palni Sir. Thank you very much, Sir, I.A. Palni Sir, for accepting our invitation, came over here for presenting our work. Thank you very much, Sir. I, I just uh, hand over the section to Dr. Palni Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me, uh, Dr. Shankar, sir. So I am honored to present before this uh, team. So the topic which I am going to discuss about is uh, related to challenges in shape memory alloy for uh, different functional applications. So as far as uh, this topic is concerned, so th these are I will be presenting some of the work which we have done in our laboratory. Uh, with respect to shape memory, uh, shape memory alloys, because our lab is one of the pioneer lab in fabricating shape memory alloys for uh, different functional applications. So we will be, I will be discussing about the different case studies which we have demonstrated in our laboratory with respect to shape memory alloys. So before going into this, so as far as these uh, shape memory alloys are concerned, so these shape memory alloys comes under the category called smart materials. So these smart materials slightly behave in a different way compared to the other conventional materials. In the case of conventional materials, the, it has its own peculiarity. Whereas in the case of smart materials, there is a kind of actuation behavior and there is a kind of response behavior which comes into the picture. Let me just give you one example. Like uh, you might have heard about this piezoelectric systems. So these piezoelectric systems that uh, it is capable enough for energy harvesting, etc. So these are some of the ideas you might have got. Through. Okay, so shape memory alloy is one such material. Basically, uh, we are just tailoring these shape memory alloy structures for different applications, including energy harvesting, as well as different soft robotic structures, etc. So these shape memory alloys have a pot uh, is capable enough in such a way that when you try to put up a heat, 
so it tries to give a displacement in terms of heat so let me just show you an example how a shape memory alloy works so this i am just take i have just taken it from a reference here if you see so there is a lotus flower which is being completely made out of shape memory alloy structure so these are some of the shape memory alloy petals which are being fabricated so what we are doing is we are just trying to induce a heat on the shape memory alloy petals when you try to induce a heat on the shape memory alloy petals these blossoms and when i try to cut off the heat it comes back to its original shape so basically these kind of materials has a potential application towards like uh, when i try to uh, put up a heat it uh, it tries to give a displacement and when i try to uh, cut off the heat it tries to come back so this is an interesting aspect with these kind of shape memory alloy structures so as far as the shape memory alloy structures is concerned so these shape memory alloy structures were first discovered in the year 1938 okay so in fact on a traditional name or a trade name for these kind of shape memory alloy structures are called as nickel titanium that is netanol the the full form of netanol is nickel titanium naval ordnance lab that is these structures are being considered for um, are discovered by some of the us naval ordnance laboratory and from that it has been executed so that is why this is called as netanol based structures so as far as in this uh, like uh, there is a story regarding these shape memory alloy structures like uh, earlier the uh, india was the first to report the shape memory alloy structures but unfortunately we didn't report it on an international context so there was a uh, goldsmith down snow so what he did is he was just making some kind of ornament so we all know so for making ornaments normally you used to add gold with copper so gold with copper at some particular level it will induce a shape memory effect so he has manufactured he has fabricated a small jewel and he has kept it near to a hot plate so next day when he saw the jewel was being transformed and it was it was back in the form of a wire so he was a bit worried but uh, he didn't report that but later that was investigated well by some of the russian scientists as well as by the us scientists where they have they have found that these combinations has a shape memory behavior in fact the first shape memory behavior was reported in the year 1920s with gold copper combinations okay so in fact i would say this is how we missed the chance so in fact if i try to look into the phenomenon of the shape memory alloy structures so these shape memory alloy structures are initially in a solid phase like uh, it it is similar to a phase transformation which is happening in a in in a in a system like in this phase transformation for example i have a ice so i am just heating the ice you get a liquid and further i am heating it you get a gaseous phase so this is how you get the phase transformation characteristics so in the similar fashion in the case of shape memory alloy also you have a austenite phase you have a martensite phase and you have a deformed martensite phase so i am just switching between the austenite phase and the martensite phase to get the actuation behavior so i can just show you this example so in this example if you see so uh, i am just using a spring i am just applying a load to the spring so when i try to apply a load to the spring so we all know it will get deformed by just pulling the spring in the downward direction now what i am doing is i am just supplying an electrical pulse to the system so when i try to supply an electrical pulse to a system so it will try to pull the material in the forward direction okay. that is initially the material is in the austenite phase the deformed martensite martens martens takes place because of the loading then this is the deformed martensite now i am applying a heat which is nothing but the austenite phase and then finally you end up in the martensite phase so uh, so this is one example where exactly we are just up applying an electrical biasing to it and then we are trying to demonstrate the shape memory behavior this is one interesting concept where if you see here i have a shape memory alloy and this is a hot water so i am just deforming it by manually and i am just putting it inside the hot water so when i just try to put it in, inside the hot water it comes back to its shape so this is the peculiar behavior of these shape memory alloy structures now comes the real challenge so how do i train or how do i program these structures for my particular application so for training or programming these structures so what i normally used to do is i make a fixture of uh, if i want to get trained in this particular fashion so i make a fixture in, in this way in, so that it switch between this configuration to this configuration 
so this is how things are getting programmed which is nothing but i just apply a fixture and i am just putting the system in an arsenite environment and i am trying to switch between the arsenite environment and the martensite environment in a furnace to get the required configuration so these are some of the materials which exhibit shape memory alloy behavior like nita nita cu cu is an al cu al and etc so as far as this nita and nita cu is concerned so when you have a heat transformation in the range of 80 to 130 degrees celsius so we we use this nita structures whenever i go i need to go for a higher configuration ranging from 250 to 350 degrees celsius then i need to go for na uh, cu z and al combinations so which which is considered to be the slightly on a higher phase so this is how basically we try to do the training so basically uh, if i need to get a particular configuration or a particular displacement i need to employ that is a, a huge amount of training so this training is to a level that i need to run this cycle for more than 50 to 60 times so basically there is going to be energy waste which is going to get transform to get these kind of structures so this is one of the major limitation of these training so what we thought is so with this as an idea these are some of the preliminary level which we did and we tried to identify the challenges so if i try to identify the challenges in the shape memory alloy structure one is obviously the tds training another one is the influence of composition so basically we have observed that nickel titanium and copper based compositions have different compositions obviously it will have its own different functionalities okay so that is one thing third important thing is thermocycle behavior like uh, if you see in a video where uh, we can find in this that uh, there is a continuous actuation of shape memory alloy which happens that is an opening and closing of the spring which is nothing but i am just trying to apply a heat and then i am trying to quench it so this cyclic heating and cooling will somehow induce some kind of oxidation behavior over here so obviously in the spring region when an oxidation behavior happens because of that it may result in failure of the spring so this is one major challenge so we were more interested about the failure characteristics of the shape membrane alloy structures so what we did is we went for a thermo thermomechanical behavior studies where we did a life cycle at different actuation conditions okay and the most important other challenge is basically these kind of structures which are commercially available or if if i try to get some shape memory alloys in the market i get it either in the form of a wire or in the form of a sheet or either in the form of a spring it is very difficult to form to for me to get it in the form of a spline or, or some other structure based on my application so so these are some of the different challenges what we observed which we need to address as a researcher so the first challenge was to overcome this tds training so for that we went for a concept called bimorph this bimorph is quite interesting like uh, you might have seen a dragonfly so in a dragonfly so this is a concept of a dragonfly which you can see it in your garden so inside this there will be a kind of nerve kind of arrangement which is available and this is your flapping region which is available over here so basically this flapping region is helpful for me to flap at a frequency whereas in the meantime the frequency is being taken care by the nerve kind of arrangement which is available over here so so what we thought is we will use this technology for our shape memory alloy in such a way that we came up with a concept called bimorph this bimorph is nothing but one layer i have a shape memory alloy and the other layer which is at the bottom i i have a polymide structure so what i'm doing is one way actuation is taken care of by the shape memory alloy and the reverse actuation is taken care by the polymide that is i have a elastic layer so one one layer the shape memory alloy will overcome the elastic layer and it will drift and and on the other layer it will cut off the thing and it will come back so for that we need to fabricate the structure because these structures are not commercially available so in fact we made our own experimental setup to fabricate these structures so that is we took a polymide layer which is a pi and we just strain this polymide which is nothing but we have programmed this which is nothing but so i am just straining this polymide so that when i strain this polymide so after deposition it gets curled like this and during heating it gets straightened like this in fact i have a small video about it so in fact we went for a simple thermal evaporation unit so in this thermal evaporation unit we almost attempted with uh, a binary ternary and a quaternary alloys so what we made is we made as a fused pellet we kept that pellet in the substrate and we just heated it and we went for a deposition so that is what an idea what we have uh, employed in this 
so let me zoom out a little so uh, in, in this case so this is the overall actuation characteristics of the uh, shape memory alloy so this is a small hot plate so in this hot plate what i am doing is i am just putting this shape memory alloy bimorph and uh, then the shape memory alloy bimorph so the one way actuation is is taken care that is the forward actuation is taken care by the shape memory alloy and the reverse actuation is taken care by the polyimide so the major characteristics in this is basically on a, on a research front we were more interested to use it for a certain amount of application so one application what we thought of is for an energy harvesting second application what we thought of is why can't we develop a similar dragonfly kind of arrangement so that we can use it for a mobile robot application so basically a small uh, micro robotic applications okay so that is what an idea what we thought so for that since we ourselves we are fabricating the structure we went for a different analysis by changing the substrate temperature by changing the thickness effect etc so we went for a complete structural analysis so this structural analysis basically we did a xrd and the most important with respect to shape memory alloy is called as a dsc analysis which is nothing but a differential scanning calorimetric analysis so this differential scanning calorimetric analysis is is quite interesting system so in this differential scanning calorimetric analysis what i need to do is so i need to have uh, i can just predict my past night and my martin side behavior and that is my actuation behavior in this dsc so this is what we have predicted in fact we went for a detail cyclic loading so for that we went for we have developed our own uh, unit so this is mainly meant for studying the life cycle behavior of these shape memory alloy structures structures so what we did is we had a program power supply from the program power supply it was connected to the copper based shape memory alloy we have a laser displacement sensor this laser displacement through this laser displacement sensor the laser was directly striking the copper based shape memory alloy structures and we can easily monitor the system so with respect to the monitor uh, what we did is we changed our temperature and with respect to displacement and with respect to time t we were trying to study the heating and the cooling heating and the cooling behavior as well as the life cycle analysis so in order to study the life cycle analysis in fact we went for a complete life cycle behavior so this is what a hysteresis plot which we got to confirm the actuation characteristics of this shape memory alloy structures so we changed the uh, substrate thickness so basically this is this is a study which we did it with by changing the substrate thickness ranging from a 50 micrometer to 75 micrometer for the substrate effect we were trying to study the life cycle behavior but basically the heating and the cooling characteristics uh, so from this heating and the cooling characteristics we were just predicting the overall characteristics in detail so this is with respect to the number of life cycle behavior and this is with respect to the displacement what we achieve in fact we made a small contact and non contact based relays using these systems so that these contact and non contact based relays can be helpful for kind of switching arrangement now when we talk about the overall characteristics with respect to the shape memory alloy behavior so we went for a complete dsc analysis as explained so since it's a copper based shape memory alloy structures so my range of uh, actuation behavior was lying in the range of 200 degree celsius so which was capable enough for me to use its application only for a 200 range process so this is one of the concept where we have employed to study the recovery ratio so what we made is so this is how it is getting curled and we were trying to study the recovery ratio with respect to the influence of substrate temperature so so like uh, we did uh, an analysis with respect to the variation in substrate temperature and then with respect to the composition to study the actuation behavior of the system and this is a complete detail analysis in fact we did with respect to uh, competing with respect to the frequency because when we when we want to use it for a micro robotic application basically we need to have a tunability towards the frequency characteristics which we have employed over here and this is the frequency behavior which we have achieved with respect to this shape memory alloy structures so this is how we have fabricated our small micro robot so we prepared our own controller so through these controllers the system were getting powered off and we were trying to study the life cycle behavior of it so this is how we have studied the life cycle analysis basically you may ask me a question that 
this is a, a kind of a thin film what we are employing so there is a chance that in the case of thin film there is a chance of delamination which may happen so we want to test the delamination behavior of it so what we did is we kept a weight on it and we were trying to power the weight at different frequency and we were trying to look into the analysis of it in fact this will give you a better clarity how we have we have achieved a controlled actuation behavior so this is at 1 hertz this is at 2 hertz and this is at 5 hertz so so this is at 1 hertz where you can see the movement and here it this is at 2 hertz and this is at 5 hertz where there is a rapid movement coming out of it in fact we fabricated our own uh, uh, micro robotic system also to demonstrate these shape number data structures okay. so the next one what we are going to talk about is so we employed this sma bimer for some kind of transformer oil sensing actually if i try to look into a direct application of this like um, you, you might have heard about this transformer blast when a transformer blast happens whenever the oil contamination is quite heavy so we need to have a system to sense the oil contamination so since already we have a material which senses the heat so what we thought is we can have a sma bimer we just put this sma bimer inside a transformer system so that from the transformer system whenever there is an oil contamination takes place the shape memory will shift and from that we can try to study the behavior of it so this is how we have employed in our laboratory so what we did is we had a transformer kind of arrangement with a copper bus bar and inside this there was an oil which is available and this oil we went for a cyclic loading in the transformer bus bar and we kept this shape memory alloy bimorph inside this transformer bus bar and here this was our laser displacement sensor so this bimorph was getting heated up and the bimorph was getting heated up from this lds was trying to monitor the system so this from this lds an iot enabled module will be connected and this will be triggering a message to the lineman whenever there is a kind of detrimental effect which is going to happen over here so this is one interesting system which we designed so that we can monitor the temperature condition of an oil so the second system which uh, i would like to talk about this is for an energy harvesting application since by a material is capable enough to actuate at a temperature from 50 to uh, 130 degrees celsius as well as 250 to 300 degrees celsius so we had an idea something like this like why can't we use this system directly for harvesting an energy from an automobile like in a, let us consider your domestic car so when you try to switch on the car even in your bonnet it reaches something around 50 to 60 degrees celsius even in an ideal condition so what we thought is we we want to make an arrangement something like this this is called as johnson's heat engine so in this johnson's heat engine what they normally used to do is here you have two pulleys in between two pulleys you have a shape memory alloy material which is being fed into this so in this shape memory alloy material what i am doing is i have a two different temperature gradient this is my hot and this is my cold temperature gradient so because of the variation in temperature gradient what happens is there will be a continuous rotation which happens so this is my hot junction and this is my cold junction and this is my sme so because of my temperature gradient you are getting a continuous rotation so what we thought is we almost demonstrated a similar structure so what we made is we made a rim out of aluminum and then we integrated shape number real structure in this and this is a hot water arrangement what we made so in this hot water arrangement so because of the uh, um, transient condition basically when the spring tries to get immersed in a hot water so there will be an expansion or contraction happens so when there is an expansion or contraction happens basically it will give a perpetual motion to the system so this perpetual motion is capable enough to harvest the energy so what we thought is so we will make two pulleys so uh, two pulleys made out of shape memory alloy so in between these two pulleys so this is a two pulley made out of shape in between these two pulleys we will put a shape memory alloy bimorph belt so that these shape memory alloy bimorph belt are capable enough so that when you try to put it near to your exhaust or near to your bonnet so there will be a continuous rotation which happens but the major challenge lies before me is how to fabricate this shape memory alloy belt so what we made is we made a, a roller arrangement something like this with a idler pulley over here so this idler pulley is made to give a force in this particular direction and there is a roller arrangement in this i am just putting up my polyamide layer and there is a rotation of the polyamide structure 
and uh, what i'm doing is i i have a unit called flash operation unit this flash operation unit is quite interesting so when you continuously feed the material powder the material powder gets agitated and continuously the material will fall into it and you can go for a thick surface so you are programming the material in the form of a pulley in the meantime you are just making this as a belt kind of arrangement so that you can harvest the energy so we tried it with this is one of the project with volvo i said so in this what we made is so we made a, a ring kind of arrangement so in this ring kind of arrangement we just integrated a pulley and we were trying to harvest the energy in the exhaust of the truck so uh, so that one one arrangement we kept it near to the truck so that this will harvest the energy so that you can charge your battery another one we kept it over here in the front face where it is being the pulley is connected to a fan blade kind of arrangement so this fan blade is capable enough for cooling uh, purpose so that this cooling is capable enough like uh, you can cool the driver seat so for that arrangement we made this structure okay. the next one what i'm what i would like to talk about is how the shape memory alloys are being embedded in an in a recent industry 4.0 system like uh, we all know about this current industry 4.0 system this industry 4.0 we call it as smart manufacturing that is that is you you want to convert a machine to an intelligent machine in such a way that you are trying to embed a sensor in this so that when the machine runs or when the machine uh, you can just tap the uh, overall signals from these machines so that you can study the overall maintenance characteristics of this machine so that is what is our idea but the thing is like in these kinds of old machines it is very difficult to integrate a new type of new type of sensor in it basically there will be an impedance match which will come into the picture so which is a major challenge so what we thought is we uh, we came up with a theory so that theory is like whenever there is a machine tool is there like suppose i have a spindle and i have a material which is being placed over here this spindle uh, is uh, here i am just trying to put my cutting tool so it, which is nothing but a drill bit when the drill bit is going to get failed it is going to wobble at a very high frequency when it wobbles what will happen is a huge amount of heat is going to get generated and then it will fail okay so what i am doing is i am i am trying to reduce this or i am trying to have a control over this or i am trying to make it intelligent so to make it intelligent what i am doing is i am just coating or uh, depositing a shape memory alloy ring over this tool holders so what is this shape memory alloy tool holder does is whenever there is a wobbling is happening on the tool so the heat which is getting generated will try to get transmitted on the tool holders when it gets transmitted on the tool holders the tool holders are capable enough in giving an actuation behavior to it so that it will clamp the tool in the meantime from the from this shape memory alloy you have an infrared camera which is available which will sense the actuation behavior and it will give your signal to your iot module or to your manager so this is what is an idea but the major challenge in this is how to fabricate these shape memory alloy structures because it is uh, it is quite trivial for me to go for uh, such kind of uh, such kind of structures so what i what I, what we have planned is basically so we want to go for an additive manufacturing thing. so this is a metal 3d printer which we have used from our nearby campus which we called as rr cat so basically they deal with it's a part of da unit so we went for a laser based additive manufacturing of the shape memory alloy structures so that you can make a tailor made structures in fact this is the setup which we used where we used a 2 kilowatt fiber laser so in this 2 kilowatt fiber laser what we made is we had an arrangement in such a way that this is your nozzle so in through this nozzle we have a coaxial powder feeder so your nozzle is something like this so through this nozzle i am just feeding the nickel and the titanium combination and using the laser i am just fusing it so that whatever structure is required you can manipulate it so when you try to manipulate you can get any kind of structures coming out of it so that is what is our idea so this is how we fabricated our structure so that these structures can be fitted into the system and you can use it for any kind of application but the major challenge in going for these kind of structures are that uh, because we are just heating it and we are just punching it so there is a chance that it may lose its property so in order to avoid that 
what we planned is so we went for a complete uh, surface morphological analysis so here i have a um, opening for me to look into the different composition behavior so we went for a different composition like nickel titanium 50 nickel titanium 55 and nickel titanium 45 and then we went for a complete structural behavior which we we went for a complete surface morphological behavior so in the surface morphological behavior what we did is we studied the porosity in fact we went for a mechanical analysis most important thing is this is what is our most important thing because when you are fabricating your own shape memorialized structures so you need to somehow compete at par with the conventionally available structures which which you get it in the market so in the conventionally available stru structures so accordingly i need to optimize the parameter in such a way that i am getting an at par measurement for a conventionally available so basically you need to get a b2 phase coming out of it so what we made is we made and the we optimized the parameter to get this b2 phase most important thing is so this is the conventionally available structure and this is what we have fabricated so in this almost a similar b2 phase is observed all there were some secondary phases which we are trying to uh, reduce it and the most important thing is so this is a kind of um, uh, dsc analysis which basically maps with the conventional system so whatever uh, conventionally you get similar kind of structures which we could achieve but still when we try to employ it directly for the application we found that like uh, we have embedded these rings in a machine tool and uh, during wobbling what happened is the entire structure was getting break easily so we thought of going for some kind of post processing so for the what we did is we since we are using laser for deposition why can't we use the same laser for post processing so one post processing what, what we thought of is something related to laser shock spinning another post processing what we thought of is related to laser animation so as far as this uh, laser shot peening is concerned so what i do is i just irradiate with the material and the material gets heated up so i i have a small sacrificial layer over here so over the sacrificial la layer i am just irradiating the laser so that i am just inducing a compressive residue stress in the meantime when i induce a compressive residue stress i want to make a uniform crystalline structure which i am trying to do it with laser only so in fact uh, And so this is the overall experimental setup for our laser shot peening process. So in this laser shot peening process, so we used a pulse laser, and this is how we made. So we had a confined medium, and we have a shock water which is being distributed, and which was generating plasma. And through this plasma, we were trying to impinge the laser on the surface to get a sharp residual stress. In fact, this is how we were trying to uh, manufacture our structure. So where we went for a complete overlapping. so when we try to go for a overlap so so what happens is you get a uniform picture coming out of it uh, in fact uh, these are some of the structures which we made for some of the shaper up machine so so in this since we need to have higher impact and improve ductility so we went for a nita cu combinations so it's a kind of a ternary alloy so again we have uh, we have since we have a capability to change the uh, different comp uh, composition of it so we change it in such a way that we got a different capability towards nita with different composition and nita cu with different comp combinations so we went for a dynamic mechanical analysis this dynamic mechanical analysis are capable enough in such a way that it will helpful for me to study the storage modulus with respect to my austenite phase and martensite phase in detail so that was an interesting part with respect to these dynamic analysis which we have investigated okay so as an extension of this basically we were also in the process of developing a small smart micro gripper for an industry 4.0 application so as far as in this uh, smart micro gripper is concerned so what we made is we made uh, shape memory alloy splines and we had a kind of arrangement something like this so this shape memory alloy splines in an actual condition it comes to be like this in an actuated conditions it forms a straight path so when it forms a straight path obviously it will induce a force and this will try to grip the object so this is how we is our proposed design but again i need to rely on an additive manufacturing for a proper application so with my earlier a lesson uh, what i got is basically with an laser based additive since i am just heating and cooling my system 
there were uh, the, since there were some kind of interfacial effects which was coming into so this interfacial effects was completely hampering me with respect to my functionality basically i had a restriction towards my life cycle behavior so what we thought is why can't we develop our own additive manufacturing unit so in this additive manufacturing unit so what we made is we use um, metal inert gas you know mig gun in this mig gun and we have just kept uh, we have manipulated this mig gun in such a way that you can make any kind of structures so we basically we were more interested into these nita structures so what we made is we fed these shape material structures in the nozzle and then we were trying to heat it and we were manipulating it and trying to get different compositions so this is the nita spools which has been employed and this is the 3d model so in this so whatever structure what we required so that 3d model were employed over here and from this 3d model we were just tapping and we were trying to fabricate different structures so this is the uh, pseudo elastic behavior and these are the different combinations which we went for for uh, for a wire arc in fact this is a proper video which we took it during the fabrication so so in this case we don't need to worry about the powder we directly used the standard nickel titanium which is available to fabricate any kind of structure what we did so here we did a complete manipulation in fact i am uh, i would I like to proudly say this that this is the first machine which is developed indigenously in our institute so the overall cost of the machine including the welding head came to around 3 lakh so we have developed our own software in such and uh, our own controller so that you can just directly feed the dwg file from the dwg file it is getting converted into a cnc code and from that cnc code you can fabricate any kind of complex structure so so we have dedicated this machine basically for printing nickel titanium structures and that is how we have we have been working on it so our major concern was uh, towards actuation behavior so what we made is so this is our as fabricated nita structure so using a wire edm we made a small pseudo elastic nita behavior so we annealed it to around 1 hour so that you get an sma twin martensite from the sma twin martensite we trained it in such a way that you get a twin twin martensite and when we try to put it on a hot plate so it was get it was getting enlarged so this is how we were trying to develop these um, uh, shape material structures so basically we were trying to switch between the twinning and the de twinning to get the required dimension so that is what we were trying to work upon so again we were more concerned about the differential scanning calorimetric analysis so we went for a martin size studies and an arsenai studies in detail so we went for a cool, heating and a cooling behavior so with respect to the heating and the cooling behavior we were trying to look into the functional capability like see, i am more interested about shifting my uh, actuation behavior so like um, if i try to change my process parameter can i manipulate my shape memory alloy actuation behavior so we did some different uh, optimization techniques so using these optimizations we were trying to restrict towards manipulating these structures for uh, different applications okay so this is the uh, in fact this is the mechanical uh, system what we have employed for it so in this we had a stress and we have a strain so with respect to stress and strain characteristics we went for a compressive testing and we were trying to study its behavior so this is on an actual condition if you see so i have a hot plate so over this hot plate i am just placing my shape memory alloy structures so the actuation characteristics were investigated in detail so basically in order to study the actuation characteristics we used this concept called recovery angle similar to the thin film so so in this thin film what we made is so we went for a different um, time variation and we were trying to study the recovery behavior so almost 80% of recovery was observed was uh, uh, was measured with the with the as manufactured shape memory alloy structures okay so another one aspect which i would like to talk about is something related to the thermomechanical behavior so which um, i had expressed my views that there is a chance that it may result in failure of it so in order to address this failure so we have developed our own uh, unit in fact we have we have patented this so in this unit what we have made is we have kept a load this load is connected to a spring and you have a programmable power supply so using a programmable power supply you are opening and closing on the spring and you are trying to study the life cycle behavior of it to have a precise measurement we went for a michelson's interferometer analysis so this michelson's interferometer analysis are capable enough in such a way that it would be highly helpful for me to study the displacement versus time characteristics 
so so with that we we did for it but uh, one more application what we were also looking into is see anyway with respect to heat your shape memory alloy is getting transformed why can't i use a laser for for creating a heat on the shape memory alloy structures so that it comes under the <coughs> category of contactless or non contact based actuation so so the idea is like for example we have seen uh, these uh, grippers so these grippers if i want to uh, employ it in some kind of nuclear reactors or kind of thing so i can use um, a laser for an actuation condition so that possibility i can work upon so what we thought is since we have uh, our own laser facility which is a fiber laser which is around 50 watt so we kept we kept a shape memory alloy structure in this for the shape memory alloy structures we were just scanning using a fiber laser and this is an lds sensor so when you try to scan through the fiber laser you can see how does the actuation behaves in fact i think i have a video on how the scanning was done so in this what we made is so this is how our spring was there and we were just trying to scan through the laser and from this scanning we were trying to study the life cycle behavior of it so this is what is our uh, sms structure which we have fabricated using an additive and uh, this is a load which we used it for testing our characteristics so you could see so here this is how we were just passing a laser through it and we were trying to look into the actuation behavior of it so that this this comes under the category of non contact type so these kind of non contact type actuation has a capability towards non contact controls okay so we studied the life cycle behavior so as uh, in most of the cases we in order to study the detail analysis basically we go for a complete breakage of the system so we continued this cycle for more than one lakh and we were trying to study the failure behavior of it in detail and this is how we were trying to look into the heating and the cooling characteristics with respect to the pulse setting mode okay so these are the, the different uh, various actuation characteristics which we have employed so in these actuation characteristics is concerned so we took the number of passes with respect to power so we also studied the effect of heating time with respect to power the actuation state speed with respect to power and the maximum displacement with respect to power and we were trying to look into the overall characteristics in detail okay so this is how we have employed a console simulation so using the console simulation we were trying to scan through the line and we were trying to look into the overall behavior of it in fact we made our own unit for studying the hot water actuation in detail so this is a small setup which we made to study the hot water hot water behavior in detail okay. so the next case study which i would like to talk about is the welding of these structures is another challenging task so as far as this weldability of these structures is, is is a major thing because in most of these cases so what you are doing is when you try to weld it with a conventional system it changes its property frequency frequently so you cannot demonstrate the shape memory alloy behavior in it. but the major advantage of going for this is basically is such kind of aerofoil structure is concerned so in, when you try to employ these structures these aerofoil structures are intelligent enough in such a way that we, it will try to reduce the load on your engine because in, in most of the cases whenever you want to go or when you want to divert your directions you will be trying to manipulate your engine whereas if i have such kind of arrangement so that i can just apply a current to it and accordingly if i try to take care of the maneuvering so that the load on the engine will come down but the major challenge which was addressing was i would say welding of these shape memory alloy structures which we have addressed into it so these are some of the conventional welding through which a shape memory alloy based welding has been has been demonstrated but the problem is wherever they have demonstrated they could do a welding but it was losing its shape memory alloy behavior so what we went is we took a friction shear welding as our welding concept and we went for a shape memory alloy welding for this structure so in this what we made is we used a friction shear welding tool and we were trying to study the behavior of it so in this behavior what we made is we made a fixtures out of it and we have an nita shape memory alloy structure and this is the line joint in which we have just employed a thin sheet so over this thin sheet the friction shear welding was being employed so in fact i think i have a video on friction shear welding how we have done for it so the a tool was progressing into it and in fact you could see a complete seamless welding 
was achieved with this NITA shape memory alloy structures. And then we were trying to study the, uh, the transformation behavior of these welded structures because I am more interested about the welding joint, how this welding joint behaves with respect to the cyclic load. So we did a complete friction shear welding often and we went for a complete and differential scanning calorimetric analysis. So in this differential scanning calorimetric analysis, so we went for the austenite and the martensite analysis. In fact, we did a complete actuation studies. So this is how, this is our welded structure. In fact, we diced it using uh, still EDM and this is the weld zone. So over this weld zone, I had an austenite transformation and I have a martensite between martensite transformation. Here you could see, so the time taken for recovery strain is around 22 seconds. And this is at 75 degrees Celsius, the time taken was around 13 seconds. So we got a higher strain and this is where exactly your weld joint is available. So in fact, uh, during your actuation behavior, your weld was not getting disturbed. So that was an interesting uh, thing which we could achieve using these, these kind of systems. Okay. So this is how we have studied the actuation studies using a hot plate. So in this hot plate, we, uh, so this is the overall behavior and we were trying to look into the welding characteristics of it. So obviously we were more concerned about the life cycle as well as the failure characteristics in detail. So what we made is, so we made an arrangement in, in such a way that, so that you have a, a, a DAC system. So over the DAC system, it is being connected to a, a computer with the lab view program and you have a program for supply and you have an LDS sensor. Through the LDS sensor, we are trying to monitor the shape memory alloy behavior. So, so we studied the theory of actuation characteristics with respect to an austenite phase and as well as with respect to the martensite phase in detail. And uh, then we were also uh, looking into the electrical actuation at different amperage conditions. So the next one which I would like to talk about is slightly we have uh, we have developed these structures for some of the robotic applications. So one robotic application which I would like to talk about is a steward platform. So this steward platform comes under the category of a parallel manipulator. So this uh, parallel manipulator concept is quite interesting where so in this parallel manipulator what, what we normally used to do is like um, you have, we have just replaced this actuator with a shape memory alloy actuator. Here we have developed this system for a opto mechatronics applications. So these opto mechatronics applications are capable enough in such a way that when you try to actuate it, you can displace it at a different angle. So by displacing at a different angle, you can have a control over the deflection studies. So we almost train this structure using a Kitting bed uh, using a furnace, and we were trying to displace a small uh, displacement so that it can be employed for the optomechatronics application. Second one, what we are looking for is like um, we used a small micro wall. So we, in fact, we developed a small micro wall. So these micro walls has a capability for some kind of micro mixing arrangement. So in this in this micro mixing arrangement, what we need to do is so you have a cantilever which is available in place. So these cantilevers are capable enough in such a way that, uh, uh, so these uh, cantilevers are capable enough in such a way that, so you have a closing gate and a opening gate, uh, which is available over here. So these closing gate or opening gate will be, will be kept in such a way that whenever there is an actuation which is falling into the system, there will be an opening and closing which happens. And uh, with that, you can have a control over the uh, uh, we can have the control over the arrangement. Okay, so we developed a small micro mixing system. So in this micro mixing system, so you have a small chamber. So inside these small chambers, you can just pump into these structures and you have a micro mixing arrangement which is available over here. So that in, the, in this micro mixing system, so you can just open and close the gate and finally you can mix it in this chamber and you can vent it out. In fact, this system, we prepared it for one of the pharmaceutical industry so that a drug mixing can be easily possible. Second thing, already we are exposed to laser-based actuation. The laser can directly fall on this surface so that the opening and closing of the system is quite easy. Okay. So this is a small uh, direction flow control wall, which we have demonstrated in our unit. So this direction flow control wall is used for controlling the uh, direction in a 
in a controlled environment. So here in this case, what we made is we had a shape memorialized spring which is being embedded over here, and this is a mild speed spring which is which is used for energizing, so that there will be a kind of movement which moves forward and a return stroke. So the A is being connected to B at one energized condition. That is when when you go for SMA heating, and A is connect, connected to the when and see when we go for a semicolon so appropriately you get a switching in the actuation which comes up into the picture okay. now we will slowly look into the development of soft robotic structures using the shape memory lies in fact this uh, soft robotics is quite interesting like um, in your conventional robotic system you will be using a uh, um, motors so these motors are capable enough for uh, for giving a certain amount of degrees of freedom to my system whereas if i want to create or if I want to go for a biomimicking capability to have a soft robotic structure similar to your hand, so I have a flexibility with it. So what we made is, in fact, we took two underwater robotic systems. So one uh, robotic system is something kind of a fish kind of arrangement. So in this kind of fish kind of arrangement, so what you can do is you can just um, uh, so conventionally these fish kind of arrangement robots are being embedded with motors. So the major drawback, if you see, so when you try to embed a motor in this, it will induce certain amount of disturbance. So obviously your controller need to take care of the disturbance and it needs to maintain a balancing. And the most important thing is you are uh, like, for example, you have a radar, which is, which is available. So these radars can also sense or pick up these systems. So, so that is one possibility where we can go for existing underwater robotic system. So what we took was we took a natural fish we studied to we try to study the biomimicking capability of it basically we try to tap the gesture of these kind of fish and we almost mimic these fish in the form of an artificial structure where we have used sma as an intelligent nerve kind of arrangement so this is a bio, uh, this is a natural fish we so we divide this part into two one is the cloudla region and another one is the head region so in between you have a fishbone kind of arrangement. So we just took this fishbone kind of arrangement and we integrated a SMA wire in this so that this SMA wire will be opening and closing to get a forward stroke or a return stroke. So this is a block diagram what we have made. So in this block diagram, you have a plastic region and you have a bellow and you have a spin kind of arrangement and you have a cloud of which is available. So inside this structure, you have a bone. So this, these, these bones get actuated and then you can have a forward stroke. So this is your front portion, this is your medial portion, and this is your rear portion. So that your front portion and the medial portion is taken care in this way. So this is how we have designed the system. <laughs> so we went for a complete embedding of these springs. So in these embedding of these springs, so we have a complete structure kind of arrangement. So in this structure kind of arrangement, what we have made is we have just put these SMA springs and we have kept these structures in this way. So by obviously by uh, uh, appropriate actuating it so you can get a forward or, or a return stroke basically you get a similar fish kind of arrangement for a control system since we already have the gesture of a natural fish so what we made is we took these gestures and we have programmed it in our microcontroller where we have fed uh, as a relay circuit so by just alternately going for on and off of the relay circuit we can have a control over it in order to maintain a buoyancy we went for a complete silicon rubber based skin. So we fabricated a silicon rubber based skin, which, which was used for encapsulating the fish. And this was a relay kind of arrangement. So in this, I have a microcontroller, I have a relay and I have a signal which is being kept over here. So these relays are going for on and off for controlling the fish arrangement. In fact, this is the actual fish, which we have fabricated in our lab. So here, I have a SMA spring as my bone and this is a completely 3D printed structures. And this onboard control was directly fed into the head. In fact, this is on a testing case. So we went for a complete PCB board and this PCB board was directly fed into the head and then we have wrapped it with a silicon rubber for the balance. So the next one, we also have developed a small jellyfish kind of arrangement. So, which is a slightly an extension of this, which was in collaboration with one of the DRDO lab. So in this, what we made is, so uh, as an actual jellyfish, we were trying to employ uh, a scale, uh, an SMA integrated soft robotic structure. 
So in order to program this material, what we made is we had a shape memory alloy, which is being integrated over here. The, sh the shape memory alloy are being strained in this particular direction so that when it gets strained, then you, on top of it, you are trying to embed a PDMS soft actuator over it. And then you are trying to study the life cycle behavior of it. And here we have an Arduino board with an LDS sensor in order to study the life cycle behavior of it. And this is how exactly the scales of the jellyfish was demonstrated. So here, this is your SMA, which is being programmed by applying a strain. So basically we made a small fixture kind of arrangement. So in this picture, we have just kept the shape memory large structures and we have just trained in such a way that using the strain, we were trying to study the behavior of it. So this is one analysis which we made. So in this analysis, in fact, we studied the effect of voltage and other characteristics. So we went for a complete life cycle analysis in detail and we went for a, a complete theoretical analysis to study the buoyancy as well as characteristics of the system. So this is how we have interpreted in our unit. So we went for two, three different configuration. So one configuration is we have directly embedded the shape memory alloy wire inside the PA structures so that we can study the life cycle behavior of it in detail. So this is how is our final configuration. In fact, we made a complete Arduino board with a controller and this is how it has been programmed. So I'll be just showing you. Okay. So, okay. So this is how actually a jellyfish moves and this is how our actual fish moves. An artificial fish which we have fabricated in our laboratory. In fact, I have a video about the different um, aspects of, of the system which is available in our laboratory, which will be highly helpful for you. Okay, so this is just to give you an overview about what are the work which you have done in our lab. So these are the facilities which are available with us. So in fact, we have a complete uh, thin film units as well as we have different types of lasers with us, carbon dioxide, NDI, and even we have a two kilowatt fiber laser for welding. So as far as characterization is concerned, we have a differential scanning calorimetry. Since it's um, we, we deal with more towards uh, mechatronic training, so we have a pneumatic system uh, unit, which is mainly meant for controlling. So this is a YRR additive manufacturing unit, which you have developed in our lab. So these are some of the structures which are being manufactured using our uh, system. So this is an in-house developed unit, which uh, was fabricated at low cost for manipulating any kind of structures. So this is a wire based additive manufacturing unit. So in fact, we were trying to make splines, we were trying to make concentric structures, even we were trying to make SMA based tubes using these systems. And uh, currently we have a capability to have a control over the grain structure. So what we have made is we have made a heating bed kind of arrangement. So through this heating bed, we can have a control, a growth control over the tapping behavior of it. And uh, most important uh, thing which I would like to say is uh, even uh, currently we have refined our system in such a way that we have just embedded a laser along with this so that you can make thin sections out of it. Okay. So this is an electrical actuation unit which we have developed for uh, for studying the friction stair welding. Basically, it's a, it's a kind of indigenously developed unit for testing the shape memory or friction shear welded shape memory or structures. So this is how we have done a laser based um, actuation studies. This is a small uh, consultancy project which we did with uh, John Deere. So basically the idea is to go for a dialess manufacturing for making some kind of uh, engine cabinets using a laser forming technique. So, so we made a, a complete engine cabinet using a laser forming process. So this is how we have done our laser forming. In fact, currently we are trying for shape memory alloy structures. Also. Okay, so this is a kind of short peening setup which is available with us. So currently we are having a work with DRDO for doing some kind of short peening for their form with GTI. So this is an SMA embedded composite flapper which we have used it for a missile application for maneuvering of a missile. So what we have done is we have integrated shape memory alloy structures in this and then we are making for, for going for a 
glass fiber reinforced composite so that you can study the oral behavior of it. So this is an SMA based uh, heat engine, which is a perpetual machine, which are developed for energy harvesting. This is a demonstration of a biomorph. In fact, this biomorph, uh, we are the first to demonstrate such kind of biomorph. Currently, we are also moving into different applications of these biomorph for some kind of micro relays, so, uh, some kind of micro uh, steward platforms for auto mechatronics applications, etc. So this is one peculiar thing, and this is what our jellyfish basically we have developed. So it almost mimics the natural jellyfish. Even we have developed a, a prototype where there is, there is an embedded sonar is a, can also be integrated in units where you can continuously uh, get tap the signal from these sonars. And this is a piezoelectric structure. Basically, it's a lead-free piezoelectric which we have developed for some kind of uh, so so more he stamps on it. So based on that, he can initiate a reaction. So how much ever he stamps, based on that, you can harvest the energy. So this is one which we have developed in our lab for for some of the chemistry lab applications. So it, it, this system doesn't has any other power. Only thing based on his stamping, he does he does the reaction. In fact, we made a small bugler alarm kind of arrangement also so uh, this is the device which we have embedded in the mat so that uh, when someone uh, stamps on it so there will be an alarm which will getting generated so this is an energy harvesting system which we have developed for harvesting energy from the fluttering flag so basically this is a complete wind tunnel experiment so through the wind tunnel experiment, we were trying to harvest the energy. So we studied at different uh, motion conditions in detail. Okay. So this is a peculiar unit which we have developed for harvesting an energy from a machine tool so that uh, we can look into the machine tool sustainability of it. So in a nutshell, if I would like to say, so our laboratory has a capability to come up with, uh, with a structure where based on your requirement, we can make tailor-made piezoelectric as well as um, shape memorialized structures. So people who are interested for collaboration, you can just write to me. So I'm free to help it. And uh, in addition to that, we also give these biomorph at free of cost. So whoever is interested to come up with some kind of ideas, we are ready to give the work. Okay. So I'm, I would be happy to address any kind of questions or any kind of queries. So I'm just giving my email ID. You can write to me anytime. Yes. So any kind of queries are there, you can just load it in this text box. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your excellent presentation, sir. Participants, please put forward your queries if you have anything. And uh, you can notice uh, sir's mail ID has been on display. So if you have any queries in future, clarification, assistance, you can uh, approach him through the mail ID. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for spending your valuable time, sir. It was a uh, uh, very good uh, sharing of knowledge. Sir. Thank you. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And take leave, sir. So thank you everyone for this session. So we'll have the third session by 1.30. So please make a note of it. The next session will be by 1.30 p.m. Thank you everyone.
participants kindly fill the uh, second session feedback the link has been posted in the chat box thank you
Hello? Hello? One Sanmugam? <laughs> 